Hey, what's up everybody? 8-Bit Flashback here. Today I want to share with you my current retro gaming setup for the new Raspberry Pi 4. And I'll be talking a little bit about my RetroFlag Super Pi Case mod for the Pi 4 and do some emulation testing for various different systems such as Sega Saturn, PlayStation, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and more. So currently, there's only a few cases available for the Pi 4, and they're nothing to brag about. They're just rectangular boxes with a couple different portholes. So I decided to go ahead and modify my RetroFlag Super Pi case to fit my Pi 4, which was fairly simple to do. With this case, I now have functional front USB ports, plus access to all my remaining ports, and a functional red LED light, and a fan to help keep that Pi 4 a little cooler. These cases are designed to fit Pi 3s but with just a little bit of cutting with a Dremel, you can easily fit a Pi 4 inside these. For the back ports, I just marked where the new Pi 4 ports are located, including the power input. Then, I cut the opening the entire width of the new ports, followed by a little bit of filing to clean up the cuts. Then for the side ports, I had to cut out this area located right here, due to the USB ports being in different locations on the Pi 4. Now with this setup, the power button is not functional, because I cannot route the power through the power input on the Super Pi case due to the Pi 4 now requiring 5 volt 3 amp USB-C power supply. But once we do have an official RetroPi release for the Pi 4, I should be able to modify the power button and make it work with a shutdown script. And as you can see here, I do have access to all my USB ports and I have tested out the 3.0 ports as well with my USB 3.0 hard drive and it seems to be working well. For an operating system, I'm still patiently waiting for an official RetroPi release, but it might be a while. In the meantime, if you want to use your Pi 4 for retro gaming emulation, there's a couple different options out there. There is a very beta version of Laka available, which is basically a standalone version of RetroArch. And this is available in their nightly build section, and I'll make sure to post a link down below. There is quite a few different emulators you can test out with this build but not everything is working, so I would still suggest waiting for a stable build so you don't have to deal with so many issues. This is available as an image, so once you download it, you will have to use an image writing program such as Etcher to write it to your micro SD card to make it work. I also tried out another operating system called Libri Elec, which is basically a standalone version of Kodi, so if you're familiar with Kodi, it might be worth checking out. I didn't explore much options with this Kodi build because my main focus was retro gaming emulation, and I did test out a few different systems. And really the only thing that seemed to work well was 8-bit and 16-bit systems. But I was able to get a few more systems working, such as Game Boy Advance. But when I tried testing out other 32-bit systems, such as PlayStation and Sega Saturn, I didn't have any luck. And now I'm going to test out a few more games with this Cody build. Here is Super Nintendo, and I'm testing out Robocop 3. And it seems to be working well, but I do notice some light screen tearing happening just every once in a while. And here is Sonic 3 for Sega Genesis. And same thing with this, it's working well, but there is some light screen tearing. If you look towards the top of the screen, you might be able to notice it just a little bit. So this is one option for you if you want to use this Kodi build for retro gaming emulation for your 8-bit and 16-bit systems. It does a pretty decent job. Now let's check out Laka using RetroArch, and we'll get right into it with some Sega Saturn. And at first glance, it might seem like everything is going okay. If you look at the frames per second located in the upper right corner, it's at a decent rate. But I do have the frame skip enabled, which is skipping around 40 frames, making the audio skip like crazy, and the gameplay extremely choppy. So right now that sound sounds okay, but if we wait just a second, it's going to skip on us. And then it'll start back up, and then it'll skip again. So I'm just going to mute the gameplay because the sound is not very good. So even though it's playing horrible, it's still cool to see the Sega Saturn running on the Pi 4. Now I'm going to go ahead and disable the frame skip to show you the actual frames per second. And this is what it looks like when I load up a Sega Saturn game. This is the Sega Saturn BIOS, and it's running at only 12 frames per second. And here's some more gameplay from Sonic Jam in the world mode. And now I'm in 19 frames per second, so it's not doing good. Now let's check out some gameplay from Sonic the Hedgehog that's also on Sonic Jam. And it is freaking out. It is a glitchy mess. And this is kind of what I expected for gameplay on the Saturn. Saturn emulation has a long way to go still before it can run proper on less powerful devices. 2GHz CPUs seem to be where the Saturn emulation starts to get decent. 
there might be a little hope for some 2D games on the Pi 4 like Gex that don't require as much emulation power. Out of all the games I tested, Gex seemed to have the best performance, but it's still not running like it should at all. Currently, I'm testing with the Pi 4 model with 1GB of RAM and the 1.5GHz CPU, but later this month I will be receiving the 4GB RAM model that features the same CPU. And to be honest, I don't expect to see much differences, if any, when it comes to retro gaming emulation. The huge difference with the 4GB model will be when it's used for multitasking purposes, such as internet browsing. But with that being said, I will still test it out and compare it against the 1GB model for retro gaming purposes, just to see if there is any differences at all. With the Pi 4, there's already ways to increase the clock speed on the CPU from 1.5 to around 1.75 GHz, which will help with emulation performance, but it will still not be enough for decent Saturn emulation at this point. But as I mentioned earlier, some 2D games might become playable when raising the clock speed. For myself, I don't want to mess with raising the clock speed right now because my Pi 4 already runs super hot just the way it is, and I don't have the proper cooling system to push the limits of my Pi 4 at this point. Now let's check out some PlayStation emulation. So PlayStation was already doing pretty decent on the Pi 3B+, and now on the Pi 4, I would say it's doing pretty well. There is some sound stuttering issues once in a while, but I think these will be resolved once a stable release comes out. And if you take a look at the frames per second count, you will notice that it's running at very close to full speed most of the time, making that gameplay a very smooth experience. Now let's go ahead and play on here for just a few seconds. works here. Oh boy. Now let's try out some Nintendo 64. So GoldenEye seems to be playable, but it's not running awesome. And I probably tried to test at least 50 different Nintendo 64 games out, and I could only get a few to work, using the Mupin and Parallel emulators. So Nintendo 64 compatibility right now is not that great with this lock of build. But I do expect it to get better, and I think we will see a pretty decent emulation performance jump once a stable release comes out. Another YouTuber out there by the name of Retro Vortex has had pretty good luck with Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast with a special build of RetroPie, and it's showing pretty promising results. And if you want to learn more about his progress, I'll make sure to post a link to his channel down below. Now let's check out some Super Nintendo, and this is Bonkers, and it seems to be playing great. And I did test out a handful of games for Super Nintendo, and they all seem to be playing fine. I really haven't noticed any issues. And here is Sega Genesis with Gunstar. And same thing for this system. Everything seems to be playing great. Haven't noticed any issues. And we're running at full speed. Okay, it is time for me to get out of here. If you like this video, if you could, hit that like button. And I'm going to leave you with a little bit more gameplay from Sega 32X with Star Wars Arcade. Have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time. Wipe out enemy fighters.